Back in 2011, I had been in the publishing industry already for a couple of years, and we were growing a publishing company, uh, my partner Rod Larravee and I, that was doing fairly well up in Canada. Uh, Rod and I are the best of friends, and uh, we're both avid readers, and we love books. Um, we pick at each other, do like good friends would, and you know, Rod is always on me about the fact that I uh, have never read an ebook. <laughs> I know that sounds odd, you know, being the CEO of a fast-growing publishing company, we've sold hundreds of thousands of books, millions of books, maybe, um, and I've never read an ebook. I uh, I owe my life to books. I grew up in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in Canada, and started my adult life in policing. I spent 14 years in investigative policing. When I was 29, my wife told me we were going to have our first child, Matthew, and I instantly decided I didn't want to be a cop anymore. I went to a friend and asked him for some advice, you know, what should I do, what can I do, and he gave me a book. He gave me Og Mandino's classic, The Greatest Salesman in the World. And a couple of years before, my wife had given me a book called The Wealthy Barber by David Chilton. And I had read Chilton's book, and uh, it, it didn't really have a big effect on me, but The Greatest Salesman in the World had a dramatic effect on me. It gave me the courage to start my first business, and I started a mortgage company, and it did amazingly well. And then I started my second business in direct selling, and uh, it did amazingly well. And I started writing books on sales, and I started reading voraciously. I've read over a thousand books uh, on every subject related to business and leadership and personal development. It was August of 2011, I was at my home office, and Rod sent me an email. The email had a link to a New York Times article in it, and his comment said, you better start reading ebooks. Well, the, the article was one that the New York Times had just posted, and August of 11, as you probably remember, was the first month that more books were sold online than offline. And Rod was ribbing at me, you know, because I'd never read ebooks. He, uh, he, uh, he said, uh, the world's going to change. And the article quoted several experts who said that 10 years from now, 80% of books or 90% of books would be digital. And of course, we all saw what was happening in 2011 in our industry and how much things were changing dramatically. Uh, the digitization or the virtualization of the publishing spaces. It's irrefutable what's happening. Major titans are making horrendous amounts of money in businesses that didn't even make sense 20 years ago. But now they are the mainstays of the publishing space. But unfortunately, it, it really caught me off guard as I sat there and thought about what Rod was saying. You see, my books are my life. And every single book I've ever read, I, I still have. It's in my personal reading collection at home. I've got a massive library in my office and one in my living room. And every time somebody comes to my house, they inevitably walk right into my office, sit down in front of that library and, and pull the books off the shelves and, and flip through them. Because when I read, uh, I just don't read. I, I do some serious damage to those books. I highlight them. I dog ear them. Uh, I remember things, I make notes of comments that I might use in business, some comments I might use in a speech, and, and those books are just incredibly important to me. So I realized that when I was thinking about what Rod had sent me, that if all of these experts were true, then there was going to be a very, very important piece of the book world and, and the world of people who love books that was going to disappear. It was that intimate connection that somebody has with their personal book collection. I mean, I think about my books and what they've done for me over the years. They've given me the teachings to run companies, but they've also helped me back onto my feet again when I've been down. When things aren't going well, I'll just recluse into my office, grab my books and start looking through them at the ones that really contain the best advice for the hard times. And... It's a very, very important part of my life. Now, I've realized since then but that that story I told you is not unusual. It's the same story that millions of readers around the world have, that same connection with their libraries. It's like, for me, those books, they're part of my legacy. 
You know, they're the reason that I've made all the money I've made. They're the reason that I've traveled in over 50 countries of the world. They're the reason that I've, I've got a million miles on Delta and Air Canada. All of my successes come from what I've read, the mentors that are contained, the, the authors of those books. Having a personal relationship with Og Mandino or Jim Rohn or Anthony Robbins or John Maxwell or Orrin Woodward, because of those books, I've never had any deep relationships with any of those people, but I feel like I have. And uh, it's been an amazing experience for me. But the best part about that for me is the chance to reflect, to hold them. When I read a book, it's, 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 it's an intimate exchange. I need that tactile experience. And so I realized that there was one piece to the whole virtualization of the publishing industry that everybody would missed and that I needed to do something to preserve it or to virtualize it. It was that relationship that somebody has with their books. And so it was, it was the most incredible thing. I had already started four businesses and had a lot of success but you know, a true entrepreneur, the ideas never stop coming. And right there on the spot, you know, in seconds, I read Rod's article, I looked at my library, I looked at a Kindle that had been sitting on my desk that I'd never used. And I realized that I needed to build a community online where people who loved books could come together and enjoy the experience. I mean, imagine that there was this magical place that you could go to a social media system and you could create an account for free and that account was like a social media page and on it was a, a, a library with empty shelves. And once you had your account open, you could take your smartphone and scan the barcodes of books that you've read and they would instantly appear uh, on the shelves or you can click the add a book button on your shelf and you can add all the books you've ever read. Now the books on your virtual library, they're not the actual books, they're advertorial pages. So imagine if every book in the world had a page and on that page was the author of the book, the cover of the book, other books by the author, a trailer video, and thousands of comments of people who loved the book. And so when you add the book to your library, you can open it up and then you can add comments, footnotes. And anybody in the world who loves books will create a page and every author in the world will have a page in this system and every book in the world will have a page and every publisher in the world will have a page and every editor in the world will have a page and people could, who loved books could hang out together. It would be like the world's largest book club is what many friends of mine had. But then my imagination just started going crazy. I said, well, why not make it the largest bookstore in the world? I've learned so much about sales and I've generated hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue for companies that I've either owned or been a part of because of sales. And I thought, well, whenever I've done well selling something to someone, it's been because I've created an experience. And then I realized that this was going to be an experience. So let's say I'm following you and you follow me and we love the same types of books. Well, I get a notification because you've added a new book and I've never heard of it before. Instantly, I'm going to want to go to your page and, and see what that book is. I go there, I hover my mouse over the book, it enlarges the cover, and it reveals that the book has 10,000 fans, but I've never heard of it. So I open the book and it's an advertorial page. I see the author, I see the publisher, I see other books by the author, and I realize I've read one of the other books, so now things are starting to make sense. But then right on that same page, I see an incredible trailer video, and the video is inspiring to me. And then I look down in the feed, in the wall, and there's thousands of comments. And then I see Bill Gates' comment and other famous people's comments. I'm naturally being brought to the point that I want to buy the book. It's a real social media experience. And so then I had to figure out how to sell books. And we spent a year and a half studying the book selling space and how the giants in our industry are doing it. And we set all the right contracts in place. And so now Reader's Legacy started selling with over 15 million books in it and over 100 new books are being added every single day because we take feeds from all of the publishers and all of the book distributors but then anybody who's an independent author because I started as an independent author anybody who's an independent author can create an account can create an account for their book can upload all the data for their book and then they can sell it and self-fulfill and we'll split the revenue a little bit 
So we're trying to help authors and we're trying to create an experience where people who love books can communicate together. Now, here's the best part. Now we had to make it a game. I understood the power of gamification and how so many companies are using it today. So we created Litcoins. Litcoins are our currency at ReadersLegacy.com. It's called their literature coins. It's a virtual currency. And so when you create your account and engage in the community, you earn Litcoins. You get Litcoins for setting up your profile, for adding your book, for adding more books. You get Litcoins for following authors, for following publishers, for sharing comments of other people, for posting onto your other social media networks. And you can accumulate these Litcoins and use them to buy books. And of course, you also get Litcoins for every purchase that you make at ReadersLegacy.com. So if you engage in ReadersLegacy.com, at the same rate as you do all the other social media channels, you'll literally accumulate enough lit coins that you may not ever have to buy another book. You'll get them for free, just for being part of a community. ReadersLegacy.com is going to change the way people write, read, and experience books. We have so many plans for it in the future. We're going to create a think tank where people who have ideas to make the publishing industry better come together. We're going to hold an annual conference in Las Vegas, Nevada, where we give out awards called Reader's Legacy Choice Awards to the top selling authors on ReadersLegacy.com. And we bring the world's elite authors together in a writing conference community to inspire young people and new people to write their first books. It's an amazing experience. And it all started because a friend sent me an article and I wanted to do something to create a community where people like me who love books can virtualize their own and add to their legacy.